join the channel today to see the full interview and others. So I kind of wanted to go back to a little bit what we were talking about earlier. Um, so James Gunn has said he does believe that like superhero fatigue exists, but uh, it's mainly because the stories he thinks the stories that are being told in these movies, TV shows are boring and the creators behind the projects have gotten lazy. They, they're just not, tr they're just kind of phoning it in. They're not trying anymore. Um, there's no real like love of the genre or love of the characters. And I, I think we kind of see that with like the Taika Waititi stuff, uh, definitely in like Ragnarok. I didn't watch the Love and Thunder, but everything I've heard from it, it sounds like that, that that's the case. But like, what do you kind of make of uh, his comments on that um, and his analysis? Because he mainly thinks that, like I know you were saying that you think the trend is over. He still thinks that the trend is is going on, but it's just that there's just been a lot of bad movies and people don't want to watch bad movies. Well, I, I think that superhero movies could continue as a genre, but they got to get the budgets down. Uh, these things are not affordable for them to make. They, they can't keep making them the way they used to. They've got to shrink them down somehow. Uh, you know, come to reason on this stuff because they're not going to make a billion and a half dollars anymore. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, they're not making it domestically and they're not making it overseas. And China is blocking distribution of a lot of these movies. Uh, they're not getting the distribution in China the way they used to, which they really relied on big time. Uh, so a lot of times um, now they are getting the distribution. There's just no one going to the theaters in China anymore. Cause I think the yeah. government was like, don't watch this stuff anymore. And yeah, yeah. The people have figured it out very quickly. <laughs> we don't, we're going to take pictures of you as you leave the theater. Uh, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it you know, it, I think it can continue as a genre. It just can't continue as, the the alpha and omega of everything they do in Hollywood now they've got to they got to move on to something else. Uh, but yeah, you're right about. Um, I'm reading Quentin Tarantino's book on cinema speculation, and he talks about how a lot of the directors from the 50s and 60s that and we love their genre movies, they made genre movies because that's the only kind of movies they could make. Uh, they were allowed to make they they were making westerns and horror films and thrillers because. That's all the studios would allow them to do. And, and they're followed by a generation of filmmakers who love making genre movies. They love the genre and they they dig into it. Uh, you know, guys like George Lucas and John Carpenter. And and so Gunn is right in that aspect. You you have to love what you're doing. But I'm not so sure he's any better than uh, Wahidi or Batiki or whatever that guy's name is, because, you know, he'll put in unwelcome comedy as well. Yeah. Um, uh, sort of mocking mocking what we're watching, almost mocking the viewer for wanting to see it. That's one of the things that I always complain about that everyone kind of almost gives them kudos for is the end of the first Guardians of the Galaxy film. They have that awful dance off scene where they are like distracting Ronan. And I'm like, Ronan is this guy who was like just a few seconds ago sending his ship down to the planet because he's so obsessed with destroying this planet. He's willing to like risk everything he's told thanos to basically sod off because he has the power stone now and he just wants to destroy this planet and he's going to get distracted by a dance off like what is going on here yeah i mean would you do that with a you know would you do that with frankenstein's monster or the terminator or some other character who's basically a force of force of nature a figure of dread no but yeah. it's like it's just cheap and easy kind of writing yeah. Uh, you know, it's going to play well to the opening weekend audience, but six months later, somebody seeing it on a streaming service is going to go, what the hell? Yeah. You know, it's, um, you know, they got, it, it, it's like they don't think of longevity. Cause I mean, look, I like some of these movies, but for the most part, they're utterly forgettable, utterly forgettable. There's nothing to hang on to in the end. So which one, which are the ones that you do remember though? They, well, that, yeah, like, the, like the earliest Marvel ones. I mean, I, I, I think the, the um, the first two Iron Man movies are terrific. I mean, they're like the comics. They have the feel of a comic book. Um, and then it, it's kind of, in the first Avengers movie is fun. I really don't like any of the Captain America movies. Although oh, I, like, really? I like their interpretation of Cap. I was surprised they kept Cap as Cap, as he was portrayed by Lee and Kirby, uh, instead of doing, you know, you know, uh, marginalizing him or making him a figure of mockery. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, for the most part, I, I enjoyed the Guardians of the Galaxy movie.
Do we lose Chuck? Oh. No, I'm back. I'm a, I'm look like I'm back. Uh, okay. <laughs> a bird you froze, you froze there. Here. I'm in yeah, Florida. So, um, yeah, I'm, you know, but it, it was pretty much over for me with Avengers Endgame. It's like you killed Iron Man. Yeah. I'm just not interested in it. Click below to become a member today so you can have access to this full interview and others.